size really matter? It does. But it's not what you think. You don't have to have a super long, gigantic penis in order to have some good sex. I'd say you just need to have a good girth to length ratio and be at least over four and a half inches. You can make it work for you. That's pretty much it. I have to agree with him. Really, it's not really about the length, more about girth. Because you can have a penis this long, but if it's that thick, it's not going to get you anywhere. It's like masturbating with a pencil. You don't, don't want to do that. You, you gotta have the right hold as well as the right length. And don't ever bust your shit out for one that's too big. If your vagina was not meant to house that, you know, meat shank, then it was not meant to be. Don't do that. Yeah. Learn. Number 14. Do I use sex to feel needed? Alright, coming from someone who is a ninfo and has had sex in a lot of her relationships... Sometimes you do use sex to feel needed. I mean, it is the biggest thing to release as much pleasurable endorphins as possible. But see, here's the thing. You need to figure out when is sex right. Because if you're just using it to because that person says you have a nice ass and you want them to like it, is it really going to matter what he thinks in your opinion in one month, a week, a year? Is it really going to matter what he thinks of you? We won't remember you. So, yeah. Um, my opinion is some people collect nice cars to feel good. Some people weight lift. I like to go get my ass kicked. I mean, they may, if that makes you feel good, go do it. If you're a sex machine, keep that fucking thing well oiled. Have fun. Number 15. Is it normal for our sex drives to decrease after the wedding? Oh, no, bro. That's between y'all. That's between the couple. I mean, estrogen and testosterone levels, if that's all good, I mean, the sexual want is up to you guys. If it's getting blale, stale and bland and, you know, you got to find something else that, like, gets you a jolly, like I said, talk to each other. Figure it out. Go find something. Ooh, this is making me feel funny and we haven't tried that yet until you've done it all. And then you can be talking about sex as boring and bland when you've pretty much had something put in every orifice of your body. Simultaneously. I see this issue a lot with a lot of my friends who just got married or have been married for about a year or two. It's, it, don't let the title of marriage screw with you. Yes, you're husband and wife now, but really that's nothing different. It's just this little sheet of paper saying that you have a title now with your boyfriend. If you guys were shiny golden sex gods before, stay that way. I mean, they're just, yeah, they don't mean nothing. Wrong hand. I'm <laughs> so ready for marriage, am I? <laughs> Just talk to your partner. That's the best situation to figure out what's wrong with your sex life. Word. Number 16. I fantasize about a guy from college even though I'm happily married. My bad wife. Okay. So, we may have different opinions. We haven't talked about it before we started filming. But fantasies are really uh, everybody's issue. Everybody fantasizes about a celebrity, about someone they used to have sex with. The issue is don't compare your partner to the person you're fantasizing about. And if you like fantasizing about that person and you want that person to come out, tell your partner, hey, this is what I kind of am attracted to and fantasize about. Could you do this a little bit for me? Now, see, here's the difference of being a bad wife is if the guy you fantasize about, you go out and fuck. That's a bad wife. Bad. I mean, what happens in here will stay in here. It's when you bring it out of there that makes it a reality. I mean, if you should just so happen to find yourself fantasizing about this person a few times when you have sex, no, no biggie. Sometimes, you know, those thoughts have come across you. To say, think that he's not had those thoughts too would be fucking ridiculous. I mean, completely Everybody ridiculous. fantasizes about something. But it's when that happens too much. It's why are you finding somebody outside of your emotional bond more attractive? That's when you got to start building that shit back up with your partner. Don't let, ever let it get out of control or you'll ruin what you got. Yeah, if you have to fantasize about every time you guys have sex, you need to have a talk with your partner and figure out what's going on and what's wrong. Seriously. Number 17. I'm heavier than my spouse, but they like me to be on top. How do I make it more enjoyable? Okay, from what I tell from this question, most likely it's coming from the person who's on top that's asking this. If you're not enjoying yourself being on top, turn off the lights, 
uh, figure out what self-confidence issue you have that is making you feel uncomfortable and talk to your partner about it because they may not have the issue if they enjoy you being on top. And another a couple little tricks. Pillows really help with that because I'm somebody who does favor the thicker girl. I mean, I, I love me a big old ass. I can't help it. It's great. Um, if they are to that point where it's so heavy it's uncomfortable, take a pillow and put it on either side of you for their knees to go on. It'll help lift up some of the weight. I mean, because a pillow will spring that weight back and, you know, won't feel so heavy when, you, when you're fucking, all right? When you're fucking. You just, it helps. Pillows. Use them. Prop yourself up. You can put one under your butt, butt and that'll help kind of like teeter-totter you, and it kind of feels like the weight's moving, not coming all down in one spot. There's a lot of ways to go about this. He knows this better than I do. I fuck fat chicks. <laughs> not, I'm not laughing at the bigger women. I'm not. I have a belly. But and Don't think I just fuck big women. I, I fuck any of you, really. It's just, if you have an issue with your weight, uh... If you want to lose weight, uh, try dieting. Try eating healthy. If you're already eating healthy, figure out if you have a thyroid problem. Yeah. Go to the doctor. It, really figure out what's better for you. It's all on you. It's your weight, your problem. The more you know. <laughs> Number 18. My spouse has been pressuring me into being more sexual. How can we work things out? We kind of already answered this in a previous video, but if your spouse is pressuring you to have more sex, if you're going to be in a relationship, it's 50-50. So, if you want less sex, but they want more sex, you got to meet in the middle. Yeah, I mean, it's a give and take. That's what being in a relationship is. And I mean, find out why he's so horny and you're not. I mean, there are ways to work around this. You can make arousal a thing, you know. Okay, well, if you want to do it, can we do it like this? You know, something you like. And, okay, yeah, as long as I'm getting my sex, I'll make sure it's whatever kind of sex you want. Okay, okay, I've been that husband before. I mean, it, it works. Trust me, use this to your advantage. Make hit the sex he want the sex you've needed, you know? And I've had this issue with a spouse of mine. Uh, if you, if your partner doesn't like to have sex because they're used to going without sex, you got to... You gotta come in the middle, and you, gotta, <laughs> <laughs> you really gotta figure out. Okay, well, I want sex around this time. Can we at least try to get sex in at least three times a week? If you don't ask, what would be their preference? And that will help you. And always come in the middle. Always come in the middle. Number nineteen. What can I do to get our sex life back to where it was before I gained weight? What's the problem? Like, what is your weight the problem? Like, do you feel you don't have the same stamina since you've gained weight? Like, if it's something that your weight is causing a problem, I can't, you know, call 1-800-WHAT'S-HAPPENING and go have a motherfucker meet up your boyfriend and whoop him until he buys you liposuction. You know, I mean, if your weight is causing you to not be able to perform, try dieting. Do something about it. If it's you don't feel confident... I mean, explain that to your man. I mean, that's his job, is to make you feel sexy. That's what he's supposed to do. That's what sex is about. Not that he's just settled for this thing to stick his dick into. Make him work on that. Yeah, really, uh, I'm a very cute girl, and I love the way my body looks, but because I have a little bit of a stomach, I'm very self-confident about it. And I'm an amateur porn model, so my body is all over the internet. But the one thing I do is if I don't like the way my stomach looks that day, I will wear something to cover up what I don't like. Yeah. So, Sorry. So the corset, it covers up my stomach, but I can still wear my outfits and look sexy. Turn the light off. Yeah, it doesn't really help with your self-confidence, but it really does help you feel a little better well, I mean, during sex. Yeah, try stuff from behind even. Ooh, I mean, it feels great. I mean, it's a new way to try things and... And if you try a new fun way to have sex, you'll give less of what you look like a care once you've experienced this whole new ah, feeling. Ah. Yeah. Kind of like that. More like the opening to Halo 2. Number 20. How do I decide which birth control method is right for me? Shake, so. 
we basically already answered this question. Consult your doctor. Your doctor knows about your body because you have to go to him to figure out what you're putting in it. And you can ask other women. I mean, there's other women who have done this birth control. But figure out what that birth control is and talk to your doctor because your doctor knows, right? The doctor knows the doctor. Trust the doctor. Trust him. And his TARDIS. And always the TARDIS. Number 21. How do we climb out of our no sex rut? No way to get around it. You just got to do it. I mean, if you both really want to get out of there, then you know what? This is it. We're going to come home, and at this day after work, got the kids somewhere else, and we are going to fuck on every surface in the house wearing each other's clothes. I mean, you fucking do it. You got to commit, and you just got to bring it back. And once y'all just, oh my God, this feels fucking good. I can't believe I'm here. Wow, this is amazing. Where have we ever gone? You won't ever leave. Like, you'll be back, and then eventually it'll run stale again. And then guess what? You got to hire a babysitter and fuck on everything all over again. You're, it's a win-win. If you're a younger couple and you don't have any children and you're in a sex rut, talk to your partner. You're only going to understand why you're having no sex if you talk to the person who's giving you the vagina or the dick. I mean... Yeah. And if you're having a no sex rut and you're single... Yeah! Leave, leave the fucking house. Stop settling for masturbation. If you want to get out of that no sex rut. Yeah. Porn is great, but it's not forever. Not forever. About three minutes. Normally I just watch about a minute and go, uh-huh. I got myself down to like a minute 40. What was the question again? <laughs> Number 22. I'm very stressed out and can't focus during sex. What can I do? If you're stressed out and can't focus during sex, you really need to figure out what you're focused on and either figure out the problem or try to... Find a relaxant, it, you know, uh, if you're legal marijuana, that's a good relaxant. It's legal to drink, but I'm not a drinker, so that, but it's still a relaxant. It's also a depressant, so if it's like grandma just died or somebody ran over your puppy, don't drink and then try to have sex. You're just going to be sitting there going, fucking chico, man. You look a fucking, look at a picture of my dog. <laughs> no, don't. Don't, you, like, if it's a depressing thing, honestly, if it stems from any type of mental health, you know, me being a bipolar manic, you know, PTSD patient and her, whatever the f- that is, yeah, I mean, like, do not ever let these things go untreated. They can ruin your life, and they'll ruin your sex life, and a life without a sex life is no life at all. Just to let you all know, I really don't like throwing my personal information out there, but I suffer from a depression. But I throw myself into a world of the internet knowing that people are not going to like me and probably say some shitty things but whenever I focus on my stress I'm just oh, my life sucks they're right but when I don't focus on it I'm just like you know what that's a nice tree and I'm going to have a good day or thank you I appreciate that comment about my butthole that made me <laughs> feel pretty it does look and that's like just me on an average day as a comedian. I don't know about the comments she could possibly Your be Your butthole looks like an asterisk. It's a cute asterisk. Thank you. Very cute asterisk. <laughs> Number 23. How can I get my spouse to choose me over masturbation? If you guys have to answer this, can you tell me? Because I love my boyfriend. I do. But he loves porn. I mean... <laughs> if you can find out what porn they're watching try to make their porn a reality if that's not working you might want to check in the fact that they're a chronic masturbator kind of like that fucker from SOA who couldn't keep his hand out of his pocket like yeah make sure they're not one of those fuckers that that's like the only way they can get off is by seeing something they feel they can't you know do in real life because that's a real thing they should have treatment for it and you should you know be riding that old mate shank in no time but chronic masturbation isn't always the reason why the man wants to masturbate over sex. Sometimes men, just like with women, us getting ourselves off probably feels a lot better than sex sometimes. Uh, if a chick reaches for my dick, I slap her hand and say, no, I can do that better than you. <laughs> I, I do. Number 24. How can I make my spouse okay with my vibrator? Okay, check this out. 
Did you know you can take your vibrator and go start smacking certain parts of his dick with it or grinding up on it and like it'll make like 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 a fountain happen. It's cool. We got these parts called the frenulum and down there towards like where the balls connect to the dick. Like the, the base is the that cerebellum? the base? No the cerebellum is in your fucking head. Oh no, I'm talking about the I know what parts well, of I mean, the dick like, is, but I don't there's know. There's cool things you can do with vibration to a man stuff, like or the gooch. Have you ever just tried pronging him in the gooch and just letting like a strong vibration just run through his like butt and wiener connection, like up in there? It's cool. And there's like I know it sounds fucking weird, but okay, yo, yeah, I'm talking about this. And I'm a weirdo for I've done it, but just go secret where nobody can see you do it and try it. It might help. It's fun. It feels good. That's all I got on it. Okay, I... <laughs> willingness to experiment is key to a sex life. That is true. I've had a spouse who is very willing to uh, experiment, and then I've also had the ones who are very closet people. Uh, when it comes to vibration, really, cock ring. That'll help them get used to a vibrator, because you put it on their dick, they're used to the vibration. And just start off slow, ease people into it that aren't used to it. You know, if they're a freak... Put the vibrator up your butt, or have them put it up your butt, and stick a vibrator in you, and good to go. Number 25, how can we sync up our sex schedules? Number 26, what are some fun ways to spice things? Have you tried butt stuff? <laughs> I tried to keep a straight face. I mean... Fuck, just try kinks and fetishes. I mean, go into a toy store together and look around and find something you can both use. And if you both think it's fun, buy the motherfucker and use it. Get to boning. Oh my god, sex shops. Like, I have had a shy partner and I took them into a sex shop and we have had so much fun. Just really? looking at different things there are. Like, they have a book at the sex shop that just shows you different positions. I mean, try yeah, something. There was a complete and, like, s set to a tutorial to butt stuff. Like, it had a little book, it instruments, lubricative oils and shit. Like, I mean, seriously, they, they make butt stuff so easy. Is that what you got? Are you promoting that book? You should put the title right there. I should. <laughs> be fucked up when I find out I'm the author. Number 27. How do I get my libido back after having a baby? Okay, ladies, depending on what you had the baby from, if you had it from the cesarean, or if you had it from the cooch, really, you gotta get your shit back together. That's one way to, s to help your libido get together. And then, you gotta find ways to help yourself feel sexually aroused after having a baby, because your body changed. You just created a life and popped it out. My first son's wife didn't want sex at all after... Your first son's wife? Yeah. Or my blah, my first son's mother, my first wife. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah, my first son's wife. You know, I'm actually 83. Um, <laughs> looking good for 83. I right, get some. But she just lost an interest in sex, and apparently it was just a hormonal change. There was nothing that could be done about it, and I had to suffer with Pornhub. You suffered. No, I didn't suffer. <laughs> I can't orgasm since we got married. What's going on? Done fucked up is what's happening. You are having some serious doubts. You might not have been ready for this shit. Your head's playing tricks on you. You need to calm down. Just dial it back. If you can't orgasm after you got married, really what he said, it could be a mental issue that you're having going on in your head. Talk to your partner. Figure out, uh, figure out yourself. Like, what is there anything wrong with me that the reason why this is... Or maybe you're just doing weird sex that you're not used to. Or it's just too boring and you need to try some new sex that you're not used to. Rub the clit. Rub it. Butt stuff. Rub the clit. Come in the middle. Hashtag butt stuff. <laughs> Come in the middle. <laughs>